Um, years ago, I had a, an encounter with an angel. Now, I'm actually going to talk a little bit about angels tonight. I'm not somebody that has, like, tons of encounters with angels. But how many understand that angels are around us all the time? They, we don't often see into the unseen realm, but angels are actually present. Um, we're never to worship angels. We don't seek angels. We don't pray to angels. Look at your neighbor and say, don't be weird, okay? <laughs> okay, we don't do any of that weird stuff, all right? We're not going to do any of that weird stuff. But uh, one day I was actually um, up north. I was in Michigan, and I was in a hotel room, and uh, my alarm had gone off, and I had had, a, I had had a dream that night. God speaks to me a lot in dreams. And so I'm also one of those people that believes that the last 10 minutes in bed is the most comfortable 10 minutes in bed. Um, so I know Avis is shaking her head at me. I know. I'm under conviction, Avis. I'm sorry. Um, but I was actually laying there, and I was thinking about this prophetic dream, but I'd snuggled back under the covers, and I was kind of laying on my side. And suddenly, I felt a physical hand on my shoulder, and it shook me. And at the same time, I heard a loud voice say, wake up. <laughs> my liver started to quiver. You know, you know how some people say, oh, I saw this angel. No, it was like it scared the living daylights out of me, okay? Um, I didn't see the angel, but I knew that an angel had just been sent down, and it shook me and, and said, wake up. And I sat up in the bed, and I said to the Holy Spirit, I said, Holy Spirit, wow, I, I, thought, I, I thought I was awake. Not just talking about sleeping, right? Spiritually awake. I said, wow, I, I thought I was awake. And the Holy Spirit said to me, most of my church thinks that they're awake, but they're still asleep. And the Lord said, you need to wake up so that you can go wake them up. So tonight, wake up. <laughs> Come on, if it was that important, I have had very few angelic encounters, but if it was that important to the Lord, I believe that that's what's on his heart right now. Now, some people say, you know, you've heard some about awakening, and I believe that we are poised right now for the greatest awakening the earth has ever seen. There have been two major great awakenings, but there have been smaller awakenings, too, that have gone throughout the earth. But I believe that we're coming into one of the greatest times of harvest, one of the greatest times of seeing souls saved, of seeing signs, wonders, and miracles, of seeing heaven come down to earth. But I also believe it's going to be probably one of our greatest times of contending against the works of darkness. Um, when there's an awakening, uh, there, it's literally like heaven and earth actually collide. And so I believe that we're living in a time that God is declaring that he is awakening his people so that we can be sent out and begin to wake up those that are out in the earth that need to have the scales come off their eyes, to have their eyes open so that they can awaken. Do you remember how it was when you got saved? It was like, oh my gosh, how did I not see this before? Right? And so God, we have within our power to be ambassadors for the kingdom, to go out and preach the gospel and to bring awakening to a, a, an entire nation, nations that are going to come into harvest. How many believe this? Amen? Um, and so uh, years ago I was pondering the difference between a revival and an awakening. We pray for revival but really what God's after is an awakening. Charles Finney, who was involved in the second great awakening in upstate New York and throughout that area, um, he actually would go into, there was one town that he went into that when he got there, they estimated only 5% of that town was born again. It's a pretty, pretty bad off town. By the time he left, several weeks later, 5% of that town was not born again. Come on, 95% of the town got born again. That's what happens in an awakening. It's not just nice little revival meetings held at a church. He said this. He said, revival changes the heart of a man, but an awakening changes the heart of a nation. Come on, do we need an awakening today? 
I believe that God is in the business of not just doing little revival fires here and revival fires there, but God's bringing tremendous awakening, I really believe, throughout this nation, throughout the earth right now during this season. And long before COVID-19 was ever on the scene, the Lord explained it to me like this. He said, revival, he said, an awakening is epidemic revival. This, in this case, maybe a pandemic revival, okay? What is that? That means you catch something. You catch the fire of God, and then you get around somebody else, and everybody you get around catches what you've got, and everybody that gets around them catches what they've got, and pretty soon we've got a pandemic of awakening and revival everywhere we go. Listen, I, I was the product. I, I came to the Lord in the, the 1970s, and um, I hung out with these kids that on the first day of their freshman year in high school, three of them met together in a janitor's closet and started praying that God would send revival to their high school. When they graduated, four years later, over 90% of their high school was born again and spirit-filled. And let me tell you, it wasn't my high school, but I was affected by that because it was sweeping through the city. Some of y'all might have heard of the Jesus movement. You know what we did for fun? We went out and witnessed. It was fun. We got souls saved. We'd lay hands on the sick. This is what we did for fun. This when we go, we'd be like hanging out. I had this one guy that was like a big brother to me in the Lord, and he'd come and pick me up at, the, at my house, and I'd, I'd jump in the car, sometimes with other people, and he'd say to me, Jane, have you read your Bible? Have you prayed yet today? And I went, um, and he said, go back inside. I'll wait. <laughs> come on. I was like, yes, sir. <laughs> I'd go back <laughs> in my room, read my Bible, spend some time prayer, then I'd pop back out and ju jump in the car. How do you know that only happened to me once? <laughs> Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 through 3 says this. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Y'all know that verse, right? Put your hand on your belly and say, God's glory is rising on me. We're going to need that because then you go into verse 2, which says, For darkness will cover the earth, and deep darkness will cover the people. How many think that we're maybe living in one of those times? Darkness will cover the earth, and deep darkness will cover the people, but... The Lord will rise on you, and his glory will be seen on you. Then nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. See, guys, God's looking at us. He's saying, are you reflecting my glory? Are you people of glory? Are you carrying my glory? Well, we've had it happen. We People walked up to us in the store and said, I, don't get creeped out. I've kind of been following you around. But I'm just trying to figure out what it is about you two. Haven't they? More than once. They start like stalking us around a grocery store. It's kind of creepy. What is it about you two? You know what it is? It's the glory. The glory draws the world. Okay. And so let me read this to you in, in the Amplified Version. I just I th Lift up your hands and let me just read this to you. It says, arise from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Rise up to a new life. Shine, be radiant with the glory of the Lord, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Say, God's glory is rising on me. 